In this edition of A Conversation with Judy Sweetness, we will be speaking to Nico Rebel, producer extraordinaire. Hey, Nico. What's going on, Jeannie? Thanks for having me on the program. Oh, you're quite welcome. Thank you for accepting our invitation. Definitely, definitely, definitely. So let's just get right into this conversation because you're, 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 um, I hear, I've heard your music before, but I can't say that I've spoken to you directly. Mm -hmm. And I think, I think that's because you're always in the studio, first of all, or, or in school. We'll get to that <laughs> later. <laughs> just like right now. <laughs> right? You're in the studio, right? Yep, yep, yep. And, and um, you know, so I just, I just want to find out a little bit about who you are. So let's just start, I'll say from the beginning, um, you were in your high school's steel band. Yes. And I'm not very clear what role you played in that. So what, what did you do in that band? Well, first off, big up because you really did your research. <laughs> I was a part of my high school steel band. Um, I used to play bass in the steel band group, you know, of Meadowbrook High School. That's where I went to school in Jamaica. I did like um, my th first three years of high school there. And then I went on to migrate here to Florida, where I'm based right now. Do you still play bass, by the way? Um, no, I don't play bass anymore. It's more gone to keyboard. Okay. More the keyboards and the keys and stuff. I'm kind of old school myself, so when I hear live instruments, I'm like, wait a minute, you do you or so? Yeah. <laughs> I'm like that myself too. So was it your family that encouraged you to join that band or I mean what what made you to even decide, you know what, let me try this steel band thing out? Right. You know, actually, it wasn't even family as much as it was just banging on the desk at school and saying, yo, them have a steel band group, you know. And me and my friend said, yo, let's join it. We don't have nothing to do after school anyhow. Because kids do your homework, but I never really want to go home and do homework. So if we could stay at home and play, you know, that would have been better for me. So we just started, decided to join the steel band and started getting into that life. That's where music really opened up for me. Okay. So basically it was just a, uh, you're just like, well, we're not doing anything. Let's just join this. Yeah, more or less. It was really a procrastination thing, procrastinating from homework. <laughs> Procra okay. You know what? And then you decided, you know what? After playing live instruments, I think I want to DJ. Yeah. How did you even decide okay, let me put down this live instrument, and then you went into recordings as a, as a DJ. How did you jump from that to that? That was an actual natural progression for me. I, um, my uncle used to run a sound, and from the first time he said, yo, come to a play with me, and I, was, I think it was like 12 or 13, and I touched those turntables at the time. It was the Techniques turntables. I was like, uh -uh. it's a wrap. It's a wrap. Straight to DJ and I select him. So, so you were actually carrying those crates. That was you. Mm -mm. <laughs> no, G. No. You didn't carry the no, 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 no. I didn't carry the crates. I was fortunate enough just to, you know, just play right. music. Yeah. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> they well, were. Hope everybody would carry a crate still. I have carried some crates later on in my life. <laughs> I had an uncle who used to DJ, so I'm telling you, I have nails now, but by, back then I'm like a little girl here, like, oh, <laughs> so you got out of that one. Yeah, it's definitely not an easy thing. It's definitely not an easy thing. <laughs> and then, and you know what? So is that why you then started producing? Because we went from the band to DJ. Now you're actually producing the beats that you played before. Right, right, right. This is true. This is true. Um, I think in music and in life, it's a natural progression of something forward. I always think positive and think something forward. So from playing the instrument and rekindling that love to now producing and composing instrumentals and rhythms and those stuff, it, it was like a natural progression for me. You know, give me a little bit more detail on what you actually, what does music production, what does that actually mean? What what does it encompass? Well, music production encompasses a wide variety of things. Um, a lot of people get the term producer confused with compos composer or a beat writer or something like that. Really, a producer 
can be the one that says, turn that instrument down. That instrument is too loud for the song. Okay. And fine tune what is going on. He's the unbiased, he's like the unbiased person in the room. But for me you now, in what we're doing here at Nick Herbal Music, it's um we're basically doing it from stage up. We're composing the beats, I'm composing the beats. Um, making sure I get in touch with these artists, so I'm being composer and producer at the same time. You know. What, so you're you? Um, do you handle the mixing also? Yeah, actually, actually, speaking about changes again, actually, I'm doing a lot of mixing now myself, and I tell you, I like mixing a little bit more than production now. So maybe I should be asking you, what is it that you don't do then as it relates to <laughs> the music that you've been putting out? Oh, man. Boy, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> right? Well, you are Jamaican. What, what is that that they say about us that we Just have? about trades that are master of none. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, definitely, definitely. But it's, it's, I don't know. I guess, I guess it's something when you love it so much, yeah, you're, you you just want to learn every aspect of it. I'll yeah. tell you what I do not do a lot of. That's videoing. I, I'm not really a big fan of being on camera or being video. You guys are lucky to have me on this right now. <laughs> okay, thank you for that one. Big up. <laughs> you know what? Your your um, music, just based on some of the artists that you work with, I have to ask: Do you turn down any artists? Like, are there some? Um, a level of artists that maybe you will not work with? Yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, one of the missions and the values that we held here at Nico Rebel since the inception was um, a level of clean music. If you listen to most of our productions, your grandma, I could carry this to my grandma and say, Granny, what do you think about this song? And not have to worry like, oh my God, yo, it's going to be so lewd and slack and, you know? So... Right. Yeah, there's definitely some artists that have approached us and we just feel like it's not the time for that right now. Well, I guess that's why you stand apart and in, in what definitely makes you different. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. And before we go any further, I want to big up all the artists that make those type of music too because there's a time and place for every type of music, you know? That's true. Yeah, so I don't want them to come and say, Yo! <laughs> Like, wait a minute, why did you say that about us? Yeah, you know? <laughs> I just want to clarify that. So, um, who were some of the first artists that you worked with? Well, some of the first artists that I worked with is my uncle, Shaka Paul. He, was, he is and was still a driving force in building Nick Herbal Music as far as um, being supportive, being the one to say, go out there and try producing. If you can play a song and you know you have an ear for it and thing. You must can produce, you know? And I made it worse when he knew I used to play in the steel band and can play the piano a little bit. <laughs> Wait, I thought you said you played bass. You played piano there too? Oh, no, no. No, I started playing piano, you know? Oh, okay. So, yeah. Oh, so there was something that I missed there. I didn't get that. Ah! Uh, <laughs> no. Well, your, your rhythms are both reggae. Uh, you've done dance hall, you've done R&B. Um, why not just stick to reggae? I mean, you know, you're from Jamaica. Why not just do reggae? Right, 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 right. That's true. That's true. But I feel like music is uh, an emotion. It's something that you feel. So growing up, to be very honest, I wasn't allowed to listen to a lot of reggae and dance hall because my parents thought that was... No, that's bad music. It's just going to let you go wild and ray and ray and ray and ray. So I was really more influenced by, like, you know, the Teddy Pendergrass, the Al Green, and hey. yeah, like the older stuff. And if we did listen to any international stuff, it would be more like the Christina Aguilera. You know, I'm not afraid to say it. <laughs> hey. Yeah, those I'm types. Souls. Look, I'm from. I'm I'm Jamaican by way of Detroit. You know what I'm saying? Yes, exactly. About the souls and Motown and exactly. hey, that's me all day. Exactly, exactly. So that that that's where I that's the environment I grew up in, and I feel like it influences me in a lot of the productions I make because there's no way I can always try and stick to just reggae. Just one 
right? So have you assisted some of the, with, with your um, background, obviously you know, uh, you come from an era of, of ballads, your musical um, background, it's, it's when the songs were ballads, when they told a story, when they represented something. So having all of that, when it comes to the artist writing the lyrics to go to your rhythms, do you help them to write those lyrics so that they fit into what you're trying to create? Oh, um, most definitely. But here's the tricky part about that. Okay. It's the same thing like um, composing a rhythm. Okay. A lot of times the artist will come and make suggestions on it, but you still the artist wants the producer to still be creative in his own right. right. So a lot of times an artist will write us, I'll allow them creative freedom to write their song or whatever because that's their specialty. So, you know, I don't really like to step on it, but there are times where you just have this great idea in your head and you're just like, I got to let this person sing it. For example, you like, um, which one was it again? Like you have the old school vibes with Shaka Paul and um, Joe Lick Shop right now. I was like, yo, come back and bring my the old school vibe. And then Doc was like, yo, that's actually mad, you know? And we can work with it. And we just sat there and we wrote out the hook and then wrote some of his verse, you know? Actually penciled out the hook for him and stuff. And then you have times where you're at work and you're bored because, you know, at the time I was working as well as going to school. So I needed a creative break and the country bus was out. I was like, how cool would it be if Maka Diamond says, Me, I go out town, feel me M O N E Y, I will be in uptown with a rich guy. <laughs> you know, telling a story like that. The country bus rhythm, which is one of your rhythms. Yes, yes. So. So wait a minute, are you singing there? Do you sing in your own production? What was that I'm listening to? No, that, that was all just me freestyling it. <laughs> you know, let's let's hear some more of that. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, no, I haven't made my debut yet. <laughs> well, snap. well, we'll we'll have to uh you'll have to come back to us to uh interview Nico Rebel the artist. <laughs> what, what I did. <laughs> um, <laughs> who are some of your uh who are a couple of your favorite artists that you've worked with through the years? Uh man, I'm so blessed to have worked with so many artists that it's like, wow. Um definitely off the top of my head I can name like all of them are nice to work with. Let me say that first, because they're all my friends. So we make music with friends, but off the top of my head, Alexander Starr is a blessing to make music with him. Okay. He's a very talented person. Voicemail, Pressure, um, Shaka Paul. Yeah, all of those people are great people to work. That's why we work so much together. <laughs> because, because of the great relationship that yeah, you it, it, built. There's a real work synergy that I can't even explain. You would have to be here to experience it. Wow. Well, hopefully we get to... Um, maybe see a live production taking place in the future, in the near future. Right, right, right. Definitely, we're thinking about doing the live streaming stuff, so anything is possible. We'll be right there when you get ready. Sounds good. Thank you, guys. <laughs> what is, um, what would you say of, of, of the productions that, you, that you've handled, which one would you say that you're most proud of? Hmm. I'm going to take a little cop out on that <laughs> because oh. because all right, this is this is the thing. I'm very I'm proud of all of them, but right now um, we have the Bad Habits EP okay. coming out with Alexander Starr, and by far I think that's some of my best work. Okay, but it isn't released yet. So when you when it releases, you guys will get it first. How about something that the massive have heard already that you may be very proud of? All right. All right, then we couldn't dance around that one, huh? <laughs> no, you because I've let you go on yeah. already. I'm not letting you go on this one. Fair enough, fair enough. Um definitely the project I'm most proud of it would I, I would have to say it would be like the Besenta come over. That was a 
underrated song, I feel, but the integration of the rock elements and the hip hop and the reggae, I think it worked well. Yeah, actually, I, I love that song. I think, um, is that the one that that had the? Uh, I think it had a heavy guitar. Yeah, that's that's the one. Yeah, was that you? Um, no, actually, that's my younger sister. Your sister? <laughs> yeah, that's my younger sister right there. Wow. Yep. She she plays um heavy metal. Okay. Yeah, so we're kind of a musical family. I well, I I definitely see that. When I I um remember that song, I believe I I got it through. Um, Desperado Promotions, Benita Desperado is actually how I got that song, and, and I remember Benita as you Desperado see, Promotions, she's always campaigning, always giving me great advice, always telling me the truth when I don't want to hear it. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's the same, Benita. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so you have a, you do have some. Um, I know you say that you don't really get into the video production part of, of things here, but you do have some official videos right. to right. your rhythms to, you know, to a song or so off of your rhythm. So um, how much of a role do you play in the production of the video? Even though you say you don't do that, but I've seen your video. So how, what's your process as it relates to the video for your rhythm? I, I, again, I'm from the initial inception of the treatment mm -hmm. to holding the lights on set. Okay. To the editing part. In the video process, I, um, we do, I'm a part of everything. Okay. Everything. Even the recent viral that was released with uh, Sam Shakapawa and Jolik shot Old School Vibes. Mm -hmm. I was actually the one that woke up 6 o'clock in the morning going out in Kingston, taking the video camera and holding the camera and be like, all right, this is the shot we want. Line up this, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's not something that I enjoy doing, but that's why I say I don't do it. <laughs> so, so do you make really great coffee? I mean, you're doing everything else. You provide breakfast or... A Cuban coffee, if you're into that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was taught by a master Cuban Jedi, so I could make a mean Cuban coffee with Bailey's um, cream. As the sweetener. See, how did I know that? <laughs> <laughs> you know what? So you're doing all of this. Yeah. And can we please just let those who are watching know that you're still in college too. Yeah, actually, not no longer in college thus since January of this year. I finished my MBA. Okay. So thank God. Yeah, it's over. Big up all the graduates. <laughs> we all know that struggle. So I finally finished, so I'm very thankful and blessed, you know? Okay, um, but w were you not going to, to get another degree? Did I have that wrong? Yeah, um, I had finished my undergrad, and I was doing my um, MBA, so now I completed that program. But um, do doing music while in school is not an easy task. Well, I had an easy task, and then um, on top of that, too, I had um, a radio show at the college radio station. So I had to be very active, very busy, and still maintain my academic career. Is that the, and, and I'm not sure if, if you know those once again who are watching understands that everything that we've heard from you thus far, you were in. You were in school. Yeah, yeah, ex yeah, exactly. Everything you guys have heard thus far, I was in school. Yes, completely right. Wow. So, like, for example, I believe the, um, the What You're Going to Do by Pressure mm -hmm. was mixed and released a day before my final class for calculus. <laughs> yeah. Wow. yeah, calculus, business calculus. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So you know what? That that makes me wanna ask you this then. So obviously you're you're setting the stage for something here. So how far do you want your music to go? Because you're obviously you obviously have a plan. So how far are you trying to take your music? Um, I'm trying to take my music as far as it could possibly go, to be honest. Putting God first and letting him be the driver. On this country bus, you see what I say? <laughs> Letting him be the driver of it. So 
um, as far as music could take me. So, you know, I know that you're not doing that alone. You know, I know that that country bus is not going on its own. Who are some members of your team um, that are helping to well, keep you on this path? Well, you have somebody they call Shaka Paul, of course. I have to big him up again because he, he's helping me out a lot. Um, you have some DJs, especially this one DJ called DJ84. Okay. He's, he's a great help in promotion and road work. He's one of the guys that would say, Yo, you're not on the road today. Um, you lazy? Get up, man, on the road. So <laughs> whenever you see me out, it's usually on that cause. Um, Storm, you have Storm. She's a part of the team. She's also an ex-educated young woman. Um, she has helped me out immensely as far as um, business plan. We put ourselves together, and of course, God, God, and uh, people such as my family, you know. I'll definitely have to have that that fan. Well, you've mentioned your uncle, Shaka you know, several times. I'm, I mean, um, I see that family is definitely important to you. Oh, definitely, definitely, definitely. Um. Jamaica has received a lot of flack lately, also in the in, in newspapers worldwide, not just in the States, but in, in Europe. As, as it relates to music, they've even implemented new laws mm -hmm. um, just based on different things that is happening in music right now. What are your thoughts on the current state of music in Jamaica? Well, and the, and the new laws that they've put in place. Well, you see, my whole philosophy, keep in mind, disclaimer, this is Nico Rebel's philosophy. This is not nobody else's thing. So you might agree and you might disagree, but music has a time and place. Yes, agreed. You have to have the bad man tune them. You have to have the girl tune them. You have to have all the tune them. But it goes right back to the same initial thing. If you do clean music, none of these laws would have to be implemented. You get what I'm saying? We always reach to that point before prevention is better than a cure. You get what I'm saying? Yes. So if we had sticked with clean music or not even clean, because there's a way of bringing across your stuff, you know. If you want to put a little wordplay or so, it's just digging into your creativity. So... If these new laws are being put in place and um, artists feel like it's stifling them, then they weren't creative enough. Right. You could definitely flip anything you want to say. Metaphors, similes, anything. And, and not have to use, what are you saying, the violence and, and, uh, that they've created laws for. Right, right. And um, violence is everywhere. We can't stop it. We could try and prevent it, but we can't stop it. It can't come to an absolute stop. And music cannot be the only influencer for that, you know? That's what, that's what I think. Disclaimer again. Right. Your opinion. <laughs> yeah, right. That's my opinion. One of the things that um, the reasons why, although we're not back home in Jamaica, one of the reasons why we've heard about everything is because of social media. And um, it, it just spreads like a brush fire, boom. Um, how important is social media to your work and what it is that you do? Extremely important. Extremely important. Like, social media is the media right now. Mm -hmm. If I want to find out what's going on, I don't need to turn on CNN. Just go scroll through your Twitter, Twitter timeline. Twitter. Right. Everything is there. Everything is there. The only thing about it that um, I am not a fan of social media for mm -hmm. is that more clutter comes into your mind. Okay. Because you're giving everybody a voice now, which is good, but some people just don't have nothing to say. <laughs> so how do you, how do you, Nico Rebel, how do you uh, make the difference? How do you weed out the clutter and get to um, the good stuff, the important stuff, the things that matter to what it is that you're trying to do. 
Well, basically, it's time. It's always a time game to do that because you'll have people on these social media networks that gas themselves up. Oops, I mean to say. <laughs> you know? I heard you. Yeah. Uh, they heard me already. Well, you know, they gas themselves up to be something they're not. So in time, everything reveals itself. And you find out they ask certain questions to realize that, oh, this person isn't really what they say they are on their Twitter profile. Because nowadays people use that to def define the person and the person's personality defines them. I definitely do that when I know that I'm, I, um, if I need a contact for something and I first I'll um, search them out using whatever search engine and then you know I'll go to one of their social media sites and I'll look at the, their biography first. All right, all right. That is something when I'm doing my research, when whatever product it is that I'm searching for, and I look at it, and then if it's not appealing, then, you know, then I, I just have to pass and continue to do a search. Right, right, right. So that's how you found out information about me. <laughs> you know what? It was a bird. It was, it was a little birdie that came and told me everything. <laughs> oh, big up that little birdie, man. <laughs> No, but definitely. I mean, you know, I I um I see that you do handle your social media because I was able to go to, um, if you can tell us what your website is, I'll let you divulge. Sure, sure, sure. It's www.nicorebelmusic.com. Yeah, and that's where I was able to go. You had your bio, awesome. Um, you know, and then you had the different albums that you've worked on. You know, everything was there. And then I just still, you know, um, just so I can get a sense of you still looked on your other social media sites, which are? Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, the big one right now. So YouTube, love YouTube. <laughs> what are your, um, if you could just tell us the handles for each one on um, Twitter, you know, one by one. Actually, um, the, for the handles, it's at Nico Rebel Music for anything. Just okay. keeping it simple and keeping the branding um, consistent across all pro platforms. So if you want YouTube, it's youtube.com slash Nico Rebel Music. Twitter, twitter.com, Nico Rebel Music. Um, Instagram, instagram.com, Nico Rebel Music. <laughs> and, and I was able to go and just find out a little bit about your personality through your postings. And that's just part of my job. Right, right. It's, and, um, and so I definitely applaud you for the word you use, branding. I cannot tell you how, you know, part of what I do is I, I do networking and um, social media marketing, and I try to get my clients to understand how important branding is. And I think you've got a handle on it. Right, because to me, the brand is the most important thing. Like, ask, ask anyone around me, anyone in the team. I... You know, like how American Express has it, that if you cut them, they bleed blue. Right. Cut me. It's Nico Rebel Music. All those colors. <laughs> Seriously, though, when I go on YouTube to look for a video, when I see NRM, I know what that is. Exactly. Exactly. There's a certain quality. We might not have the quantity of videos or the quantity of releases or, you know, but there's a quality aspect in there, you know? So tell me, I'm young, I'm a teenager, I'm, you know, not sure what direction I want to go in. I think I have a musical talent, I'm not exactly sure. What can you, um, as someone who started from you to where um, you got right now, I don't want to give your age away, but you are still extremely young, but what can you tell me um, if I want to break into this industry doing what it is that you do and have done? You got I would suggest to this person, I would sit them down and say, hey, so you really want to do music? <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I would sit them down. <laughs> it's tough. Yeah, it's, it's a tough industry, but um, I would sit them down and really tell them to explore. When, when, when you're young, you try and do various things because you're not sure what exactly you want to do. So I would definitely encourage them to explore it because... That was my biggest mistake. I got the opportunity to go to piano lessons younger at a younger age and didn't really take advantage of it as I should, which would probably make me a greater player today. But now I'm trying to, oh, let's practice, practice, practice. So, I mean, explore it. And if you're going to do it, do it because you love it. 
don't do it for the facade of the glitz and the glamour of money or girls or whatever you're into. Because really, you just have to work hard. Work hard. So you got to love it. What if, okay, well, what if I'm an artist and I'm interested in working with you? How do I get in touch with you then? Right. Just hit us up at info at nicorebelmusic.com. Just email us and then we'll reach out back to you. Sweet. It's super simple. You have to network to get work. You have to network to get work. Yep. Look at you. I know, I know we're gonna li- we're gonna hear Nico Rebel. I don't know DJing on a on a mic somewhere or something with all those lyrics you've been throwing this evening. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> That's true. It's true. Well, it's true. Nico, this has been a very insightful conversation. I thank you that that um, you have taken the time to sit down with us and to just let us know a little bit more about you. Um, we really really appreciate you. And is there any last words that you have for those who are watching definitely i'd like to thank um desperado promotions first and foremost for inviting me to sit down on this awesome program this is great um thank you guys for having me and thank you lord for another day to do what we love right Amen. so that's that's basically it i want to let you know that this interview will be featured on geniesweetness.com awesome. <laughs> Also on reggaepromotions.com, and we're going to promote it across several social media sites, Facebook, Twitter, MySpace, maybe. Nice. Yeah, MySpace is making a wicked comeback. You see that? Yeah, I see that. I see that. I do see that. We've never stopped using it, though, so. Oh. It's, uh, so we just, I, I'm guilty. I'm guilty. I, I kind of <laughs> I kind of fell off. And it will also be on nicorebelmusic.com. Well, we, we appreciate that. And YouTube, we, we will definitely upload it to YouTube. And we also do send it to FM and XM um, state, uh, radio stations for syndication. Nice, nice. Thank you, guys. I really appreciate this. Nico Rebel team all thanks you as well. <laughs> You're very welcome. We'll talk to you soon, Nico. Definitely. Yo, what's up, Massive? It's yours truly, Nico Rebel, representing for www.nicorebelmusic.com. Check out the brand new Phantom Moja song, PSA, because we have to make an announcement to the world. And the people just don't know. Slap me someone from long time. They must sell out the country, no.